clearly spelled out in the act itself. And we have put that in our portal for the information of all concerned. So that is a very, very important aspect, the confidence that I have to give to my bidder. Then only they are going to come on my platform. Then the clarity on the post-match auction process, how the payment will be made, how many days he will get, what kind of timeline will be there for actual you know, ownership of the uh, rights, any restriction on the property. Like in one uh, case uh, which we had to deal with and it went on for litigation for quite some time, we had sold a land parcel for regional corporation to one of the uh, bidders. That was way back in over 15, 20 years back. And that was through a tender process, it was not through e-auction. And at that point of time, somehow the information about the plot was not there, that there was a Karla Badinda pipeline that was going underneath that plot. So it cannot be developed for any commercial use. It was probably, it can be used only for, say, as a park or a botanical or some kind of a recreational activity. So that important information was missing and it dragged into court for many, many years. This is the kind of restriction on usage of land and such aspects have to be brought to the notice of the bidder before the auction can actually be taking place. And if there are any dues or taxes or any kind of encumbrance or a restriction or the state government rights or the central government uh, uh, improvement, all these things will have to be put up before an event can take place in our platform. So for this we uh, have an advisory role for all the sellers also. Then regarding the bidding parameters, how actually a transaction takes place in our portal? It can be uh, with the ownership transfer, that is outright sale. It can be on long lease or for rent. And it can also be for uh, developer selection. Like you just give a land parcel, you are just going to select a developer who is going to develop that property to a commercial or whatever has been envisaged in the scheme and hand it over maybe in a BOT model or any other model, good model. So depending on that, we are fixing the parameters of, uh, as to what will be the bidding parameter. It can be price per square feet or square meter or it can be a lump sum, lump sum amount in case it is a outright sale or it can be a annual or monthly license fee. It can be a rent or it can be a upfront lease and a premium for a long period. So these are the parameters that we set out and depending on the property and the kind of usage that can be put to, we decide, we decide the parameter of course in consultation with the owner of the property. Then what are the various bidding solutions that are available? See if it is just a very simple uh, residence that is available and it's going into a B2C sector, then probably you just need to quote one lump sum price. But in case it is a uh, industrial plot or it is for a, a, you know, a development, you have to do some due diligence as to what kind of person can actually take this opportunity. So you need to do some technical evaluation. So that also can be built into the platform. So the action, uh, the uh, methodology is we do some due diligence as to what is the property, uh, for how long it is going to be given to the um, the bidder, actual bidder, and. Uh, if there are any restrictions or what is the usage of that property, based on that, we fix up the auction. The very simple methodology is the property auction where a lump sum quote is taken. Here, we, are, we talk about the uh, duration of the auction and during the last 8 minutes of the uh, closing time, if there is a bet, there is a provision for auto extension. So that all the bidders who come to our platform get an equal opportunity to improve on their bid. Even you can have multiple variants like you know pre-bid qualification. Maybe you know we don't want bogus bids. So we have a pre-bid requirement, and uh, the bidders are expected to give uh, some kind of EMD prior to coming to our platform. Then there can be a pre-qualification criteria, as I said then lot structuring, whether it can be you know a single lot or multiple lots, then what will be the unit of measurement, square feet, square meter or the entire land parcel. That way we, uh, we devise the auction methodology. So this is a very simple case of a uh, forward e-auction. In case of uh, the second thing that I talked about was when we have to do some due diligence, we need that uh, you know some pre-qualification criteria has to be met with before we actually select the uh, price factor. 
So then in that case we go for tender followed by option. So that is a two stage process. So in the first stage we generally take all the technical qualifying criteria are set out. Those who meet the qualifying criteria are only taken to the option uh, uh, the second stage and only they are eligible. So then uh, the there is a role of a tender committee. So the tender committee, all, all these bits are kept in a very encrypted form. So even our own administrators don't have any access to the technical bits and the price offers that come up in our platform. Then the technical comparative statements are also generated by the system. See, this is the efficiency that we bring into the system. Otherwise, these were things that were taking months together for any of these sellers. They were supposed to sit and go through large voluminous papers to just qualify a bidder and then open a price bid and then evaluate and then finally place an order. So this, with the electronic platform, the efficiency is built in. So the second stage, as I said, is consists of the forward auction where only the price criteria is taken and those who are technically qualified, only they are allowed to participate in this stage of the auction. <coughs> then there is a third option also. The second option that I talked was the auction <coughs> takes place after the technical qualification takes place and it is a two-stage process. Here I am talking of a simultaneous process of tender of auction. There can be a situation where you are really not aware of what should be the ideal price at which the land parcel or the asset has to be sold. So in that case you probably want some kind of a blind bidding. So we are giving a tender is a single bid. He is uh, giving a bid and it is seen and encrypted and kept in my platform. Then the auction also takes place simultaneously. After the close of auction, the highest price between the auction and the tender is compared by the system itself and the winner is the one who has given the highest bid in both these events. So this gives an advantage in the sense that when you actually don't know what should be the price and you are interested more in blind bidding. So this is also an option that uh, has been used in the past for real estate <coughs> as well as for other, other, other products. Uh, the other customizations that we have done, so these are just the standard processes that are probably available with, across multiple platforms. But uh, what is the USP that MSTC offers? That is the customization to all our sellers. So we have dedicated websites for each of our clients. Say my client uh, say like HMDA, they are interested in uh, you know uh, bidding for large number of residences and commercial plots or uh, residences. So uh, in one event itself, they can have listing of huge number of properties, and they can also select as to what will be the criteria of bidding, what will be the incremental price, what will be the you know if it is on per square feet or if it is going to be lump sum, whether any decimal bidding is required, whether any multi-currency bidding is required, all these things can be customized to the to suit the requirement of the seller. Then lots can be open for open for all or there can be a qualified criteria, maybe we can take a free bid because we want only the serious bidders to participate. Then Pre-qualification criteria also can is uh, digitized in our platform in the sense that whatever technical qualification criteria we have set for like the documentation or the PAN, GST, their registration, their experience and uh, the, uh, any other criteria, the turnover or anything, all these things are, can be uploaded in the portal itself and the bidder also has a library facility where these things can be kept common for any event that he wishes to participate in. And here again, you know, there are a lot of government organizations who are not registered with the GST. So there can be a RCM kind of a mechanism or there can be a without down RCM where the GST or especially in lease and rent and all the GST gets attracted. So in such situations, the GST is paid directly on the portal itself. The government or the seller need not take the headache of collecting the GST and the deposit. So apart from that, there are n number of opportunities for customized reports, MIS, like as I took the example of HMDA, they have been selling their properties for almost 4-5 years now. So if they want to see what was the rate at which a particular 
uh, property got sold three years back. Based on which they want to take an informed decision today as to whether today a property has been sold or not. That kind of MI is uh, available, the repository is available, and any customization, customized solutions. Now, what whatever I have said so far is the more of us a standard solution that is available to anyone who comes to our platform for selling or leasing their property. Now, what is the customization that we have done so far? Some of the the first example that I would like to give is of the NPAs of the banks. Now, here what is our preparing a listing portal. And all the authorized officers of these banks, they were given the user access to this portal. They were actually, you know, putting the property details on this platform. And we, in the standard solution that I was talking about, uh, actually, uh, uh, can understand this better. So, DPOM is uh, the government uh, organization which will be uh, actually monetizing all the assets of the CPSUs. So, a dedicated portal was required for uh, monetization and uh, this was not a very standard kind of a uh, you know listing and uh, bidding for it it is a, a two stage process first is the e, uh, e tender stage and the e auction stage then the technical qualification now what is unique about this is the technical qualified criteria for any asset under the firm will be will have some kind of uniformity you don't have to keep devising the technical parameters every time the price bids are open only of the technically qualified bidders by the title committee members. And this again is a completely automated process. The global EMT concept is there here also. So I don't know of what MSTC has done in this uh, project for ITPO. You all have seen the Bharat uh, Mandapo. So how that has actually come into place is ITPO wanted a developer to be selected. And for this, a big document had to be created. We had to engage uh, legal experts for this. So in close coordination and with, uh, in consultation with IPPO, we devised uh, Here, since 2018, there are lots and lots of uh, properties, residential, commercial, industrial, that are auctioned almost on a routine basis by HMDA. And the numbers are very, very huge in number. Now, what is the uniqueness in this portal is most of the part, uh, participants, the bidders, are NRIs. So, they are really not really aware of most of the notifications or the, uh, the, uh, you know, the acts or <coughs> the regulations or how it will actually happen, what is the time frame. Sitting in another country, it is uh, very difficult for them to for the SETI auctions where the custodian of any properties in India. Uh, this is the first tranche of auctions that we have held and today probably the sale rates are getting executed. So this was a challenge and in the first round there were about 45 properties, about 31.5 crores has been uh, already realized and uh, the second round will happen on the 14th of December and that again has about 44 properties. Uh, Supreme Court uh, has been approaching, I have been, in fact, uh, we have been a favored uh, service provider for Supreme Court also. So <laughs> not just the coal blocks, even Amrapali properties, when uh, the developer did not, was not able to meet his uh, liabilities or the commitments to the buyers, the properties were uh, taken over and these were to be auctioned. So MSTC has was awarded this job and we have been conducting these property auctions also. Since then. then, apart from these major clients, we have now we, uh, you know, uh, signed an agreement with Eastern Rajasthan Canal project, which the government wants to raise about 10,000 crores. Uh, government of Rajasthan has already in, entrusted this work to us. Then, apart from that, Ranchi Municipal Corporation for renting and leasing of Shaw of Canteen. These are small ticket sales. So, what I want to emphasize here is nothing is so in the past avail our services for selling some of their niche and prime properties in the heart of Delhi. Apart from that, NMDC, the Taj Man Singh auction, we are all already aware what happened. That when the lease expired, we had to go for auction. That property auction also, MSTC was proud to be associated with. ITBO, I have already explained about that. And Air India had huge, large number of properties, residential as well as commercial office space which again was sold through our platform. 
And apart from that, we have these uh, podcasts, GSRBC, we found all these PSUs who are selling regularly on our platform. Uh, MSTC has been able to do all these things mainly because of the experience that we have gathered over the years and uh, the use, ease of, uh, it's the user-friendly feature, ease of doing business, all these things we are providing in a single platform, so that is the advantage that you will be getting. I've been told that I'm already running behind schedule, so I'm just rushing through this. Uh, takeaways for the sellers is uh, the hassle free registration, the transparency, competitiveness. Obviously, competitiveness will lead to optimal price and any kind of report for better decision making is available at the click of a button. And for the buyers, it is a pre bid wallet. As I said, their identity is not disclosed, it's not known even to MSTC. The security, how the bids are kept in our portal that I have explained about. And the online payment, we, we have an integrated and local structure as state of the art because of which we have been the preferred service provider for the government of India. And what we aspire to do is enlarge our reach and have, offer this facility for the private sector, the real estate developers. Uh, for individual users also, it is very easy to register in our portal and they can participate and take clause, residential complexes and LPAs. And web applications and mobile apps are just, uh, we are in the process of uh, developing those. And we also, as I said, we also aspire to be in more of a transaction advisor or a, uh, you know, uh, advisory role. Uh, we are also interested in uh, a technology or a knowledge kind of a platform where all kinds of uh, you know knowledge sharing that is required for the sector can be given and uploaded in our system so that it offers a one-stop solution for all the stakeholders. Thank you. I'm uh, running behind schedule, so sorry if I have rushed through some of the slides, but I'm open to questions and answers. And uh, after my second speaker, we'll take the questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for a very 